let's go to the author first. Francis Bacon is also called Viscount Saint Alban. It's a title. It's a title given to him because he rose to life and to different stages. So this is a title, Viscount, V-I-S-C-O-U-N-T, Viscount Saint Alban or Lord Verulam, V-E-R-U-L-A-M. Okay. Uh, primarily an essayist, but professionally a lawyer and also a philosopher and also a scientist. Let's see. Um, the word essay was for, you know, it's a French word, E-S-S-A-Y. And the form, the literary form, essay was introduced, you know, to the world by Michel de Montaigne, M-O-N-T-A-I-G-N-E. So he was known for writing short pieces on particular topics. He called that essay, E-S-S-A-I. Anyone, even what is the primary meaning of the word essay? Uh, I think still we retain that word in English when we use the word essay as a verb. When we say essay as a noun, it's a written piece, right? But if you say essay as a verb, if, if you say, I'm going to essay, you know, this shirt, or I'm going to essay an adventure. What is the meaning? Essay means you do, and I guess E-S-S-A-Y as a verb. So that is the primary meaning, not a review. Uh, essay means attempt. To attempt, you make an attempt to do something, right? So that is the original meaning of the word essay, E-S-S-A-Y, an attempt. So this is an attempt on something. So that is the original meaning of the word essay. This was a spelling, French spelling, our oldest French spelling, E-S-S-A-I. So this could be a question, who introduced this literary form or kind of a father of the term, I'm a literary form, essay, Michel de Montaigne, French writer. So here is a line from one of his essays. Marriage is like a cage one sees the birds outside desperate to get in and those inside desperate to get out. So kind of a philosophical or a kind of a, a advice. So that's how he writes essays. And this was imitated by, imitated by Bacon. Then, uh, According to Bacon, uh, he wrote, this is, this is for I wrote essays. He says, grains of salt, which will rather give an appetite than offend with satiety. So when you say essay, it should, you know, invoke you or it should provoke you to do, uh, you know, provoke you to explore things. It won't give you satisfaction so that you will not do anything at all. So it's like giving an appetite. You know, it teases you so that you go further. So that is by Bacon. And this is the original title. The essays, subtitle, or Councils Civil and Moral. Uh, this was once asked in a set exam. What is the subtitle of the essays by Bacon? The essays or Councils Civil and Moral. So this is the one. And on the cover page, you can also see Sir Francis Bacon. Lord Verulam and Viscount St. Alban. So these are his titles. Look at Bacon, you know, just 12 years old, he went to Trinity College, University of Cambridge. Such a studious person, good at studies. Then he became a lawyer. So he joined Gray's Inn, I-N-N, -N. here Inn refers to law, okay, like a bar council. Gray's Inn, he studied there. And 1582, he graduated as a lawyer. So professionally, Bacon was a lawyer. And he moved in the later of life. For instance, uh, 1581, he became MP for Bosini Cornwall. Then 93, uh, 93, he made a mistake. 1593, he made a huge mistake because at that time, Queen Elizabeth was the ruler. She imposed heavy taxes and Francis Bacon opposed heavy taxes. So he was out of Queen's favor. So Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, she favored 
Sir Edward Koch, another famous lawyer. I hope we came across this Sir Edward Koch when we discussed uh, Addison and Steele. In one of the essays, there is a character in Addison and Steele's essay. There is a character who practices law. Can anyone name the character uh, created by Addison and Steele? That character is known for uh, his professional skills. Yes, Templar. T M P L E R Templar. So we already discussed Templar, where Templar is better than Sir Edward Coke. So that was a comparison we already looked at. Fine. Sixteen or three, there is a turn change in fortune in uh, Bacon's life. Why? Queen Elizabeth died. So Queen Elizabeth period, Elizabethan period, we have fifteen fifty eight to sixteen not three. After the death of Queen Elizabeth one. you know he became the favorite of the king anyone which king came to the throne after queen elizabeth after her death in 1603 from 1603 1625 someone ruled so who came to the throne after queen elizabeth is yes, james 1 so james 1 or uh, james 6 of scotland so james 1 we call jacobian age so that's the one so when he was at the throne uh, bacon was respected then 1613 attorney general 1618 lord chancellor he was a rich respected and he had everything but something turned uh, nasty for him 1621 there was a parliamentary uh, group formed by the famous lawyer edward coke and another lawyer uh, leonel cranfield they said in the parliament that there was corruption throughout the administration especially the charge was against the court of chancery c h a n c r y and the head of this court was bacon the purpose of this department the court of chancery is to issue uh, patents licenses uh, to practice a trade or you know for inventions and other things but to get that license people had to bribe that was very common so bacon was caught bacon uh, received a lot of bribes from people to award licenses but not only bacon it went to the upper level including james 1 and james 1's favorites but ultimately he is a scapegoat you know when there was a committee then there was a group a parliamentary group of course they investigated everything and finally someone has to be sacrificed at the altar of this group so bacon was sacrificed so bacon was asked to get out of this department and he was asked not to enter parliament so now everything changed then bacon came out of politics then started writing and especially these essays so that's how his life uh, changed from bad but there is one observation that uh, draws our attention alexander pope uh, in his essay an essay on man as i told you before pope o oh, o oh, remember that an essay on man alexander pope said the wisest brightest meanest of mankind francis bacon why because a very clever person bright wealthy rich fine but in order to move up in life bacon betrayed a lot of people his own friends he stamped upon his own friends so he stabbed at people at the back, in the back so that's how he moved moved up in life that's why alexander pope uh, calls bacon you know morally wrong person but uh, ironically he is the one who has written a lot of essays on morals the wisest meanest and uh, brightest and meanest of mankind bacon okay and there is a piece of information that uh, we should read i hope you remember john aubrey a u b r e y his famous book a brief lives i hope um, whom did uh, john aubrey call a butcher i mean a famous right elizabethan writer whose father was a butcher and this writer was also a butcher and he was known for killing calves and giving uh, you know a speech a high speech as yes, a shakespeare so that 
information we get from brief lives. Maybe you can check out uh, that small short entries, brief lives, uh, around four or five pages. In the same book, he also gives another interesting story about bacon. Now, he says bacon was uh, taking the air in a coach. So bacon was a uh, traveling in a coach or wagon with a friend. And suddenly he, he saw snow lay on the ground and it came into Lord's thoughts. Why flesh might not be preserved in snow as in salt? So it's a kind of a eureka moment. Something struck him, an idea. He thought, see, you know, uh, whether it is chicken or fish, that could be preserved in salt traditionally. Suddenly he looked at snow. Then he thought, why not we use snow, ice, to preserve, you know, chicken or flesh? So that was the thought that entered uh, Bacon's mind. So what he did, um, he stepped out of the wagon or the coach. So he bought a chicken from a nearby lady and he plucked and he asked, he had the chicken plucked and he stuffed the chicken with ice, right? So that you know, he was experimenting. But in the process, what happened? He contracted a pneumonia. And um, uh, you know, he was sick and he finally died. So this is the story we get from John Aubrey. I think John Aubrey is known for writing this curious stories. We don't know whether it is true or false, but this is interesting that, uh, as I told you before, Bacon was also a scientist. And we are told the modern refrigerator you know, uh, comes from this basic idea that flush or chicken could be preserved in snow. So sometimes a bacon is considered the precursor of this invention called fridge, a refrigerator. So that's a, this is a piece of uh, interesting news we get from Jean Aubrey's Brief Lives. Then some of his works, The Advancement of Learning, uh, 1605, very beautiful work. And here's a line from that work. If a man will begin with certainties, he shall end in doubts. So if you think you know everything, then you are going to end up in uh, doubting everything. But on the other hand, but he will be content to begin with doubts, he shall end in certainties. So if you start doubting, if you think I don't know anything at all, I have to learn a lot of things, then surely you will land up in good things. And this is a utopian work. The new Atlantis is a kind of a utopic world where everything is perfect, a kind of a, a model world. Anyone who wrote the work called Utopia? Utopia. Um, because when we say Utopia, the form itself, which writer comes to your mind is Thomas More. And there's also another writer who wrote a kind of a Utopia work, uh, whom um, Virginia Woolf called a materialist or Edwardian writers. Of the Edwardian writers, Virginia Woolf said, one is more on utopia. Yes, H.G. Bills. Good. Okay, fine. Let's go. Then, that, as I told you before, Bacon was a scientist. So before Bacon, this was a thought process. Uh, if you study in a university, uh, you know the syllabus. Right. So you have to read three things. Triumvirum. We have already looked at that. So it should be grammar or it should be logic. Right. Or um, it should be rhetoric. So when you go to a university, you have to read Aristotle's Organon. O-R-G-A-N-O-N. And Aristotle prescribed this method called syllogistic method. S-Y-L-L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C, syllogistic method. What is a syllogistic method? It's a form of reasoning. You will be given two statements or propositions. And with the two statements, you have to make a conclusion. All right. So for instance, if I say, all men are idiots. This is statement number one. All men are idiots. Then statement number two, Vasu is a man. Okay. Statement number one, 
all men are idiots statement number 2 vasu is a man so what's your conclusion so with these two statements you have to conclude you have to derive something out of the two statements so what could be your answer anyone first one all men are idiots then i think vasu is a man so what could be your conclusion so you have to say something about this guy and draw something out of these two statements you make a statement right you say yes vasu is an idiot known truth i guess so this is the statement how did you come this now come across or made made this conclusion this is called deductive reasoning d e d u c t i v e i mean you make particular details from general laws so what is a general law all men are idiots and you come you talk about a particular person called vasu you say vasu is an idiot particular detail how did you arrive at this because from a general law so this was the thought pattern you know when uh, bacon was at the university bacon challenged this idea he said if you want to be a scientist or philosopher the method should be a new method so he wrote a book called novum organum organum n o v u m o r g a n u m novum organum new tool so organum means tool to a tool to explore the world a scientific world or the world itself so he said this tool is not enough so he came up with novum organum new tool and this method is called inductive method i n d u c t i v e inductive method it's also called the baconian method named after francis bacon he said if you want to be a scientist you can't make a general law and come to a particular detail no first you have to you know collect data particular data particular instances then you have to say you have to make a general statement for instance if you say gravity it not just one apple falling from a tree wherever you go in the world you know it's not only apple any object falls from above to the surface so gravity is there in every place so particular instance one apple that inspired the idea of gravity and from that you come to the general principle so this is scientific proper scientific method and this method is called inductive method simply put you you come up with general principles from particular data particular instances particular examples this method is scientific so that's why bacon is celebrated as a scientist inductive method or the baconian method and in the same book novum organum he warns uh, people of four things see uh, you could be a good guy you could be a reasonable person but your scientific mind could be clouded by four things four idols idol kind of a blind worship so number one he says the tribe the tribe refers to human kind human kind in general see people by nature by their human nature uh, tend to make bad decisions tend to believe in certain things so you should be aware of this general human nature then the cave we have already looked at the allegory of the cave anyone who put forward the allegory of cave in which philosophers uh should come out of that cave see the real world and go back and rule that world anyone yes plato so plato uh said allegory of the cave so compare so when you say cave individual nature each person has some you know uh, their own prejudices so you should be aware of your own faults so that is number two or else if you follow or if you take pride in your own fault then you can't be a uh, good explorer of the world then the marketplace why marketplace if you go to a marketplace you uh, you meet lot of people and you speak with them sometimes if you just you know make uh, an ill choice of word then you are gone so beware of ill choice of words that will you know that will um, make you fall so beware of that and finally he calls the theater he calls the theater an illusion a kind of a performance so by theater he means philosophies i mean dogmas of philosophy 
for instance you belong to a particular religion there are set of things that you should believe if you follow that particular religion or if you follow a particular party a political party you say this is the party best party and that is the worst party you always see the negative things about that one so you have dogmas or particular principles you abide by so beware of all things so if your mind should be clear and explore the world beware of the trap the cave the marketplace and the theater so symbolically human nature in general your own individual nature then your choice of words then your uh, uh, dogmas so these things will cloud your mind you can't think clearly so this is the new tool avoid this and go back to scientific method then um, these are some of his works just a minute yes the wisdom of the ancients uh, kind of a translation you know kind of a collection what people said before then you have uh, overcome nature silver silverum s y l b a s y l b a r u m silver silverum and bacon was also a historian he wrote this book the history of the reign of king henry the 7th so you should remember all these things especially this book the history of the reign of king henry the 7th now let's go to our own work the essays subtitle or councils civil and moral when we say essays particularly bacon's essay this is the uh, characteristic feature of bacon's essay they are pithy p i t h y pithy short crisp concise and up to the point and this quality is also called this is the word often used to describe bacon's essay epigrammatic there is a kind of a philosophical statement or um, high statement and short life a, a comment on life so epigrammatic for example look at this line from he says say of parents and children he says the joys of parents are secret because they can't share their uh, pleasure with children right they can't talk about their uh, sexual life to children so and so are their griefs and fears similar way they can they should not share their uh, problems and other things fears with children because that will spoil their life they can't utter the one because first the first one they can't even utter to their children nor they will not utter the other there are parents they will hide their sorrows they will not you know tell this to people you know their children at least let them enjoy their life in their own way and let's also look at some data so you can get questions like this for the first edition of essays came out in 1597 when it came out in the in the year it it had only 10 essays then second edition 1612 uh, 38 essays third edition 1625 58 essays so 10 so 38 58 so at least remember this so sometimes may ask totally how many essays are there 58 okay so 10 38 58 first edition 1597 then 16 12 16 24